Hydrofracking New York, from one New Yorker to another, by Mike Varley. Energy Independence. Energy independence is the second positive pointed out by those in favor of hydrofracking. Estimates for the amount of natural gas trapped inside Marcellus Shale vary significantly. Geologists Gary Lash and Terry Englander estimate Marcellus Shale may contain as much as 489 trillion cubic feet, or TCF, of natural gas. The Potential Gas Committee, a nonprofit volunteer coalition of academics and gas industry experts, estimates the Appalachian Basin, which includes Marcellus Shale, contains 227 trillion cubic feet. A recent U.S. geological survey put the number at 84 trillion cubic feet. In our state's Supplemental Generic Environmental Impact Statement, or ESGIS, the number quoted was the Lash Englander estimate of 489 trillion. Of course, not all of this is recoverable. Using the fracking methods practiced at the Barnett Shale Shelf in Texas, about 10% of that could be recovered, or a bit under 50 million TCF. The end result is enough natural gas to fill all U.S. gas needs for two years. As it stands, where would you guess our natural gas comes from? The Middle East? Africa? Russia? In fact, about 85% of it is produced domestically, in states like Texas and Louisiana. Of the other 15% that's imported, 95% of it comes from Canada, or where most New Yorkers go to have fun between the ages of 18 and 21. There is a demand for liquefied natural gas brought here via ocean tanker, but it remains less than one TCF and comes from countries like Australia, Indonesia, and Trinidad and Tobago. The question is, what system are we emancipating ourselves from by pursuing natural gas drilling? Natural gas already enjoys the status of cheapest fossil fuel available, and there's no danger of surprise supply cutoff due to political instability or far-flung natural disaster. Furthermore, natural gas and oil are not interchangeable. Natural gas is used for heating and industrial activity, oil primarily for transportation. To switch our transportation preference from petroleum to natural gas would require a level of effort equivalent to nation building, not even entertained in these strange political times. Paradoxically, perhaps what we should be looking out for is our natural gas being taken from us. Our neighbors to the north are already experiencing this problem. Rapid expansion of hydrofracking in Canada over the past decade has flooded the markets with natural gas, driving prices down. A recent agreement between Canada's National Energy Board and the gas companies allows for gas exportation to Asia, even as projections from export proponents suggest Canadian demand for gas will outstrip supply in less than 25 years. The exportation approval process is already underway in the Gulf Coast, where three gas companies have filed papers with the Department of Energy to export liquid natural gas from ports around the Gulf. One company, Shinnery Energy, received the go-ahead in May to export gas out of its Sabine Pass port in Louisiana. Observation shows us Marcellus will likely follow precedent. Natural gas will flood an already cheap market, and companies will look to export it out from ports like the one owned by Dominion Resources in Cove Point, Maryland presently a site for gas imports that has ground to a halt in the wake of recent shale gas extraction. The infrastructure is there. All that's needed is the approval. And for those who may hold out hope that the gas companies would stick true to their claims of promoting New York or U.S. energy independence, one final thing to consider. The following is a list of companies that have been acquiring smaller U.S. mining operations in anticipation of the Marcellus Shale grand opening, along with their country of origin. Why any of them would have an interest in U.S. energy independence is beyond me.